Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's video, I'd like to try and clear up some of the confusion around charging standards and chargers in particular because we've gotten a lot of questions over the last couple of weeks from viewers that have gotten new products over the holidays asking how best can I charge this drone or this camera or this tablet and I realize there's a lot of confusion out there about the different charging standards like PD versus QC. People want to know what a GAN charger is. And to be fair, the technology is constantly moving forward. So as products become bigger and they need more energy to charge their internal batteries, the chargers have to keep up. And there are standards bodies out there that are designed to actually put the standards together for what a charger looks like and what kind of voltage and current each of these chargers can deliver. And it's really important to pick the right charger so you can charge all of your equipment quickly and safely. So let me start off with the basics. There have been three USB standards for connectors over the last 10 years that have really matured quite a bit in recent years. So originally we had the standard USB-A connection, which is the larger flat connector that everybody's been using for years with their wall charger. And then the other end of that cable typically terminated in one of three connections. A micro USB, which is the smaller, older standard that's being phased out on a lot of pieces of equipment. The USB-C, which is the brand new standard that everybody's starting to use on phones and tablets and drones. And that's the one you'll see in a lot of new products. And then Apple went their own way with their Apple standards. They've got their own iPhone lightning connector. But essentially, chargers have to provide two types of connections for the charging end of the cable. And that's either a USB-A or a USB-C. Now again, most modern chargers use the USB-C, and Apple even moved to that with their newer phones. So understanding that end of the connection is important because there are two fast charging standards on the market, QC, which stands for quick charging, and PD, which stands for power delivery. And it's interesting that those standards have developed completely independent of each other, but they have some similarities between them. But again, if you have a product that charges through PD or power delivery, and you plug it into a QC charger, you're not gonna get the fast charging capabilities, and vice versa as well. So if you have a product that's QC enabled, and you plug it into a PD charger, you're not gonna get the fast charging. So it's important to either find a charger that does both, or to find the charger that matches the device you're trying to charge. Now I know that sounds confusing, but it's really not that hard. So let's forget about the quick charging for a second. Before quick charging came out, the only standard we had was USB. And a standard wall charger that's a USB charger delivers nothing more than five volts DC, and then it can have different current ratings on it. So the smaller charger you used to get with your older phones that were these tiny little wall warts were typically five volts at one amp. And they did a good job of charging those older phones. But as phones become bigger and more powerful with bigger batteries, those chargers started getting bigger. So you're seeing chargers in the market that were 5 volts and maybe an amp and a half, 2 amps. 2.4 amps is the latest, and that's the most you're going to find on a standard wall charger. So any charger that's a standard USB charger today typically is 5 volts at 2.4 amps, and that does a great job of charging your phones. Now where this gets confusing is somehow the manufacturer started calling that type of charger a fast charger which makes no sense whatsoever because five volts at 2.4 amps, there's nothing magical about that, but that's the highest amount of current you've got. So if you see that term fast charging, check the specifications and I'll bet you it says five volts at 2.4 amps. Now where it got really interesting about eight years ago or 10 years ago was two standards emerged that were actually fast charging standards. And those are the PD and QC chargers that I was talking about. Now QC is a quick charging technology that's used on a lot of products like tablets and phones. Um, some other cameras use that QC standard as well. And essentially what both of those standards do is they're smart ports that when you plug a device in that's compatible with a QC or PD port, the charger should look at that device, interrogate the current charge level of that device, and then adjust both the voltage and current of the charger to quickly and safely charge that device. And that's where it gets a little bit magical because the charger has to be smart enough to negotiate that, that with that particular device. And again, it can vary the voltage. It can go to five volts, it can go to 12 volts, 24 volts. And now there's a new standard out that'll go to 48 volts, but that's all on the charger. So the charger has to be smart and be able to negotiate that voltage. PD or power delivery is exactly the same. So with PD, it interrogates the device. It can adjust the voltage and current above the five volts that a standard charger can provide and will fast charge that device. And as that device gets closer to full, it drops the voltage, drops the current, and it trickle charges it up to 100%. But the big thing to understand here is that PD and QC are different. 
And what frustrated us a couple of years ago, because I've got three Drone Valley chargers in front of me that we designed, what frustrated me years ago was that I couldn't take a charger in my car or in my home that did both and did both well. So we sat down as a team, as we often do, and started thinking about if we were building our own charger, what would that charger look like? And I came to the team and I said, for starters, it's got to be able to deliver QC and PD out of the same charger. I also want both of the connectors to be standard. I want a USB-A on it and at least one USB-C on it. I wanted to make sure that it could do PD charging where the chargers were smart enough to adjust the voltage and current, as well as QC charging to adjust the voltage and current that direction. So what we built was a car charger, 95 watts, a home charger, 65 watts, and a brand new home charger that can deliver 140 watts. Now the wattage is important because when you go shopping for a charger, it's like the wild west out there. There is no official standard. So when I say this is a 140 watt charger, what that means is I've got three USB-C connections and a USB-A on the end. You can use a full 140 watts of power to charge an external device through that top USB-C connector. But what's interesting about a lot of companies is they don't actually produce a 140 watt charger that can deliver 140 watts out of one port. What they'll do instead is they'll add up the wattage of all the ports to whatever it happens to equal and they'll promote it as that type of charger. So in this case, I've got four ports. Maybe each of these can deliver 35 watts. That's not really a 140 watt charger. That's a 35 watt charger that happens to have four ports. So with our technology, when we specify the voltage and current, it's actually what you can pull out of the charger. So when I say you can, you can take 140 watts out of this one to charge a device, that top port will deliver that. Now you can also split charge, which means any two of these ports can deliver 65 watts independently and they can each negotiate the PD standard or the QC standard independently. And that's another feature that I designed into the chargers. I said, I don't want to have it be a charger that can't negotiate both of those standards. So all of these chargers can negotiate both QC and PD. Another important feature that's in these chargers, especially the home chargers, not the car charger yet, is the technology they're based on. And that happened about three or four years ago. We went from the silicon-based technology, which most chargers are built on, to a GAN technology. You're gonna hear that term an awful lot. It's capital G, little a, capital N, and that's gallium nitride. And what that is, is a brand new chemistry for a charger that allows the charger to be smaller and a lot more powerful and generate less heat because it's wasting less energy. So one of the insistence I had on our home charger designs going back about a year was that I didn't want to put a silicon charger out. I wanted to make sure any charger we designed for the home was a GAN charger. So both the 65 watt charger and the 140 watt charger are both GAN chargers. There are no GAN chargers yet for the car because that's a, a radically different technology. But what you're getting with these two technologies is for me, the perfect charger, the 65 watt, will deliver 65 watts out of the USB-C port. It can also split that into two 35 watts, a 35 and a 30. So you can actually charge two devices at the same time at a full 35 watts or 30 watts and 35. With this one, I can pull 140 watts out of that one port or I can split that into two 65s or four 33, 35s. So you've got a lot of different options there. With the car charger, it's a 95 watt charger, which means I can pull 65 watts out of the top one and I can pull another 30 watts out of the bottom one. So we're giving you in these, in these chargers really the best of everything. It's GAN-based technology for the home. It gives you 95 watts in the car, QCPD, 65 watts at home, QCPD, and 140 watts in the home, or split that into 265s. Now, one other thing that's changed is the PD standard. So the PD standard used to be PD 3.0, um, raise the voltage in chargers to 100 watts or the current to 100 watts. And that was a major advantage because that allowed you to charge bigger things like laptops, larger tablets, drone batteries. A lot of the drone batteries that are out there for your Avada, for your Mavic 3, um, for some of the larger drones require at least 65 watts. And if you can get a 100 watt charger, you can charge them even faster. So with 3.0, that's what that standard provided for. There's a brand new standard out, and this is something you should pay attention to. It's called PD 3.1 and that raises the wattage to 140 watts. This is a PD 3.1 charger. So if you're comparing anything I'm showing you on the table today with other products you may be considering, keep that in mind. You wanna make sure it's a GAN charger. You wanna make sure that at least one of the ports puts out the maximum wattage, 140 watts, and you'll know that because it'll be a PD 3.1. 
And again, the advertisements tend to be a little bit fuzzy because everybody's trying to sell you a charger that's less expensive, but it doesn't have the features. And you'll get it home, you'll plug your stuff in, and you'll realize, boy, I really didn't get what I thought I was going to get. So with these, we built all those standards into it. Now, we've been manufacturing manufacturing this charger for geez going over two years at least maybe two and a half years at this point this one's been out about a year and a half this one is pretty new it's only been out about seven months but we've been testing well over a year and when we design these chargers these aren't ones you buy off the shelf these are chargers that we work with manufacturers on we come up with the specifications we come up with the case design we talk to them we test them a lot of times we go through four or five revisions revisions this one right here we actually went through seven revisions because every time it came back there was some little thing about it that i didn't like and we sent it back to the manufacturer and said correct that correct that correct that so it took us about seven months to get that charger manufactured but these are rock solid products um, and again drone valley is a company that when we get frustrated with a situation we'll design a product that solves a problem and these solve the problem for us with charging because it allows me to charge pretty much everything in my car and certainly everything in my home. Now the reason the 140 is important is because if you have something bigger, like a laptop or drone batteries like out of the Avada or the Mavic 3 or some of the new drones that are coming, uh, or large tablets or game consoles, you're gonna need a heavy duty charger. So when you're trying to decide between these, the 65 is perfect for smaller drones or even mid-sized drones, average tablets, uh, maybe mobile cameras like action cameras and things like that, certainly phones. Um, the 140, will give you twice what the 65 gives you. So you've got two ports in here that can deliver 65 watts each. So with this one, you can charge pretty much everything you own, including most laptops. Now, one other thing I wanna mention is that the charger is 50% of that equation. So this will deliver the current that I just talked about or the wattage I just talked about, but then you have to connect it to the device. And if you're using the wrong cable, you're gonna have a lot of problems. So what we include with this, in other words, we offer all these chargers as standalone chargers. If you have your own cables, you're in good shape. We also offer them as a kit. These two chargers come with a USB-C to USB-C that'll deliver 35 watts of power through the cable. And they also come with these adapters that turn the USB-C into a micro, an Apple, and there's another one here that'll turn a USB-A to USB-C. So pretty much you're getting a plumbing kit here included in this pouch that allows you to connect anything you need to connect to the chargers and fully charge it. With the 140 watt charger, we include a heavy duty cable this one right here, which is a custom Drone Valley design cable. Um, both of these cables, by the way, have cloth woven exteriors. They're incredibly flexible and they're insanely uh, durable. These things are gonna last you quite a long time. But the reason this cable is important is because it's a high powered cable. Because if I plug this cable in, even though I can deliver 140 watts from the charger, this will only carry 35 watts. So I'm choking the charger with the cable. I can't deliver the amount of current I need. With this one, you can. So we're including this with the 140 watt charger and you can get it again as a charger or you can get it with the kit that includes this in the pouch. So I know this sounds like I'm trying to sell you a charger. I really started this clip to try and explain the differences between chargers because we get so many questions from viewers saying, hey, I just bought a charger on eBay or Amazon or they went to their local store. I got it home and it's not quick charging. What am I doing wrong? You may not be doing anything wrong. It might just be the wrong standard, or maybe it's underpowered, or maybe you have a bad cable. There's a lot of reasons that chargers won't fast charge your devices. These were designed to fast charge your devices. They include all the plumbing you need to charge those devices quickly. And just like with everything Drone Valley manufactures, we stand behind it. So if you have questions later, problems later, we're gonna be here. Now, I'm not gonna say that these are gonna be cheaper than the ones you can find on eBay or some other retail site, but I will tell you that they're worth the extra money. They're not gonna be much more expensive. They might be a couple of bucks more expensive than the others, but you're getting a product that's rock solid, that was designed by engineers, that we stand behind, and we use every day. And these are rock solid chargers. So that's all I really had today. Hopefully I've answered your questions about charging standards and chargers and tried to eliminate a lot of the confusion because I stay on top of this because I'm a nerd and I like studying things like this. But for the average consumer, I can see how this would get really confusing. And when you get on those retail sites and you look at a charger, boy, it looks great. It's 140 watts and this will work with everything I own. I'm going to get it and the price is right. Let me grab that and see if I can plug my stuff into it. It may not work for you. So understanding what those standards mean can really help you make the best choice. And that's all I really had for today. So hopefully you found some of this valuable. I enjoy talking about technology in general. And I thought today was the day that I wanted to sit down and explain how chargers work. And, and hopefully you found value in that. So thanks an awful lot. If you're interested in any of this, I've got links below where you can hit the website. We also got links to Amazon if you want to buy it over there as well. And for me, I love these products. 
more than that, I love designing products that solve a problem technologically, and these do a great job for charging all your gear. So thanks again for watching, and until next time, as always, happy flying. Thank mm -hmm. you.